In this video, we'll be covering report design basics. To design reports in WIMS, I'm going to go to the menu here, click on Design, and then Spread Reports. This brings up our report designer. It looks like a spreadsheet, and it allows you to locate data from the database into a spreadsheet and save that as a report definition. So what I do is I click on a cell where I want to place data, and in this case, I'm going to go to the Locate menu. Locate has a lot of options here. The first is locate daily values. So this would be to locate raw values. I can also go down and group data to do monthly summaries, averages, things like that. So in this case, I'm going to start by just locating some raw values. I'm going to locate daily values, and it brings up a form. It asks for which variable do I want to look at. And I'm going to click the three dot buttons right here, which will bring up our variable browser. Our database is organized in locations, and in this case, I want to go find my Influent Flow, so I'm going to click on my Influent Location and pick my Influent Flow variable. Next, I'm going to say that I want to display up to 31 values. I'm trying to do a monthly report, so that sounds right. And I want to place the date beside the data so I know what date the data is for. I'm going to go to the Heading tab. I'm going to check off that I want to see this in my heading. It shows me an example, so I'm going to see Influent Flow MGD. And when I go ahead and I click OK, it's going to go and pull that data into the, into the report. Now what's nice is it doesn't just pull it from the database and put it into this report. It actually located a formula that will pull that data. So what that means is I can change the month and data for that month will then be brought up. So now I'm looking at March's data. I'm going to click on D3 here and locate another variable. So I clicked on D3 because wherever you place the cursor is where the locate is going to start. So I go back to locate daily values again. And now I'm going to choose another variable. And I'm going to click on all locations. I'm looking for my BODs. So I use my quick filter to look at BOD, and I find my effluent BOD here. Click OK. Notice that it now says, well, you probably want to do the same heading. If I go back to options, it doesn't say to place the date. It doesn't keep that one, assuming that once you place the dates on the report, you don't need to again. Also notice that it says, in this case, include the less than, greater than, or ND. That's because when we set up the effluent BOD variable, we told the system that it will allow data qualifiers or lab qualifiers to be placed with the data. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK, and that data gets placed on the report. Moves me over one more. I can go back to locate daily values again, click the three dots, and now I want to put my loading calculation on the report also. Double click on it to bring it up values only because when we calculate the pounds we don't cascade the symbols in. I don't need the date. Heading is still the same and I click OK. So I've got a report now. Uh, I've dumped out some data for sure and uh, I can move months. It doesn't look that great yet but I have my data. So since it's a spreadsheet I can really do anything that I want that I'm used to doing in spreadsheets. It's a little different, the editor, than Excel. But again if I go in here I can highlight a range of cells. I can set the font to bold. I have the ability to set the border. I'm going to box my columns. So I can start to make this report look better. I also probably want to put some summary statistics here at the bottom. So let's say I want to get the min and the max. So we allow you to type in formulas just like you would in a spreadsheet or in Excel. So I'm going to put equals here min of C6 through C36. Places it. Doesn't give me enough decimal places. So I use my buttons here to get it to three decimal places and maybe I want to center it. 
can also do the max the same way. And I want to center that. Now if I go in here and I type in min of d6 colon d36, it doesn't calculate. If I click on it, I typed in the formula correctly. The reason why it doesn't calculate is because of the symbols here, the data qualifiers. A spreadsheet can't take a, doesn't understand what less than two really means natively. So what we have to do here is locate the summary that we want from the database. So I'm going to go to locate and report summary. So what report summary does is it will summarize the data for the chosen variable for the date range of the report. In this case, March 2016. So I click here, I choose my effluent BOD variable, and now it says, well, what do you want to know? And it's, I want to know the minimum, and it says, do you want to place the symbol? If the minimum has a symbol with it, do you want to place it? And I say yes. All the other options at this point I don't need, and I click OK, and I see that my minimum is less than two. If I click here, and I go to locate report summary again, now I can just click maximum, click OK, and I get my maximum of 43. So this is a way when, you're, when you have data with data qualifiers, you can locate the data, a report summary to get that data in. Another thing I want to cover here is the ability to group data or to do statistics over many months, let's say. So if I go to locate group summary, it says, well, I want to do effluent BOD. That's the last variable I chose. I want to know the maximum. Let's say I want to know the average, and I want to know it for 12 months. It says, OK, do you want to calculate the average? And if one of the values in the month contains a less than, do you want to calculate the average with a less than? In this case, I'm going to say yes. I want to locate data backwards in time. What that means is I'm going to start in March 2016 and then go to February, January, December of 2015. I'm going to go, I'm going to get the preceding 11 months and this month average. If I don't check that box, I go forward in time, I would get March, April, May, June. Okay? So I'm going to go backwards in time. I want to descend those months. And I'm going to place the start date of the month in this format next to it so I know which month this average is for. So what I have here is my average for March 16, 2016 is less than 19. For February, it's 24, so forth and so on. Now when I change months, my numbers change and I have a report designed. Again, we'd have to spend a little bit more time formatting this report, but I've got a decent looking report. I'm going to now save it. And when I save it, what I'm doing is I'm going to allow other users to now run this report without having to get into design. It will show up on their list of reports to be output. So here we'll just call it uh, monthly report number one. I can put it into groups. I've already defined some groups. I'm going to put this one in my process reports group. This is just to keep my reports organized so that I can find them later. Click OK. Exit out of the report designer and I'm going to go to report pack spread reports. And this shows me the list of all reports that I have designed and that are saved. So if I click on process reports I'll see my monthly report number one shows up right here. So now your users don't have to design a report. If they want to look at this, they click on monthly report. In this case, I'll just say sure, run it to the screen, click OK, and there's the report now output. And again, in here when I'm outputting reports, users can change months and look at data in any way they want. That's an introduction to designing reports with our spread report designer. Thank you.